In this video, we will see how to install C and C++ compiler and run the code. And we will also install Visual Studio Code IDE and set up that for C and C++. The C and C++ compiler is GCC compiler. And to install GCC, we can install MinGW. MinGW stands for Minimalist GNU for Windows. It's a free and open source software development environment specifically designed to create native Microsoft Windows applications. So we will install MinGW that has the GCC compiler as part of it. We can install MinGW directly from the website, but we will install this using MSYS2. MSYS2 is a software installation and building platform for Windows. Why use MSYS2 to install MinGW? In simple words, it makes the installation process simple and handles the dependencies and updates with no effort. It uses the package manager named as Pacman. So let's install MSYS2. Go to the website. Click download the installer. Follow the steps for the installation process. It will be installed in C drive. MSYS2 provides a command-based interface. Firstly, let's increase the font size. The first command will be using Pacman to update the system. This will update system's package database and upgrade all out-of-date packages. It is asking if we should proceed for the installation. Press Y. It has installed the update. Now to install MinGW for 64-bit system, we will use this command. Copy that and paste it here. It found 16 packages to install and asking to proceed. Simply press Y. It is installing those packages. MinGW has been installed. If there is any error at the end, you may need to repeat the process. We should verify if MinGW has been installed successfully. For that, simply use the exit command to exit from MSYS2. Now from the Start menu, search for MSYS2 MinGW 64. This means MinGW has been installed. We can verify if GCC compiler is installed successfully. For that, use the command GCC space hyphen hyphen version. And we get the information about GCC with version 14.2.0. While coding in C and C++, we should also install the debugger which is a powerful tool to find and fix errors in the code. We will install GDB, which stands for GNU Debugger. For that, we will use this command. Let's copy it and paste it here. It found 18 packages to install with a total install size of 321 MBs. Simply press Y. Let's verify if the debugger has been installed successfully. And we see version 3 has been installed. Everything has been installed and we can simply exit the MSYS2. There is one last crucial step before we can start writing code. Making the GCC compiler accessible throughout your system. This means you can use the GCC compiler from any directory without specifying its full path. For that, go to Windows search bar and type in CMD. It will open the command prompt and currently we are in our system's user folder. Let's write the command GCC space hyphen hyphen version to verify if GCC is accessible here and see it could not find the GCC. The reason is that MSYS2 was installed in the drive C.
Inside MSYS64 folder, we have the folder for MinGW64. And inside bin, we have all applications like GCC and GDB. So we need to tell the Windows about this path, so that when we will run the codes, it knows where to find the compiler GCC. Let's copy this path. Now go to Windows search bar and search for environment variables. Click environment variables. We have section of variable for user and then the section for system variables. Over here, you will see the variable path. Click edit to edit it. Here, click new to add a new path and paste the path we copied a while ago. Click OK a couple of times. Now let's open the command prompt again and check the GCC command. Now you see we are getting the information about the GCC version and should be okay for the GDB. Now we can create and run the C and C++ codes in our system. But for the better and professional experience, we will install the IDE Visual Studio code and configure it for C and C++. This offers a rich set of features for code editing, debugging, IntelliSense, and project management significantly enhancing productivity and code quality. Let's see how we can install and configure Visual Studio Code. Search for Visual Studio Code on Google and open the first link. Choose the operating system as Windows 10 and 11 and download has started. Run the installer and follow the steps. I will not change the default path. Check different options as your choice. The last two must be checked. Visual Studio Code has been installed. By default, it is in dark theme, and we can select some other theme from here. There are so many settings and options you can configure, all of which we cannot discuss, but I will show you the process. You need to press Ctrl plus, Shift plus P, and it will open a palette where you can search for any setting. For example, type color theme, and you will get bunch of options to choose from. I will change that back to default dark theme. The most important thing is configuring Visual Studio Code for C and C++. On the left side palette, you can see the options to create file, search, etc. And the last one is extension. From here, we can install any extension in Visual Studio Code. It shows the famous extensions based on number of downloads. After a couple of Python extensions, you can see the C and C++ extension or simply type CC++ in the search bar, and you will see this extension. Click the Install button and wait until it gets installed. It has been installed. Before testing a C or C++ program, we will install one more extension that provides very handy features to run the code and the name of this extension is Code Runner. Everything is set up and now this is the time to test a sample code. Suppose this is the folder in which I want to keep the C or C++ program files. For that, we should go to this Explorer option, and from here we can open the folder where we have program files, or we want to create new files. To select a folder, you can also go to the Menu Bar option, File and Open Folder. Select the folder from your drive. And we have this Explorer window here, which currently has no file. You can press Ctrl and plus or minus sign to zoom in or out. Firstly, we will test a C program, and then we will test C++ program. To create a new file, you can go to File and New File. 
or more conveniently, you can press this little icon for new file. Let name the file something like code1.c. The extension .c is important for the C program. I will copy a very simple Hello World printing program. To run the code, you can right-click here and go to option Run Code, or press Ctrl plus Alt plus N. You can see the output displayed here. Also see, it created the exa file here. Now let's test another code which takes input from the user. This code take a number from the user and prints the square of it. If we run this, there is no error, but it does not take input from the user. The solution is running the code in terminal, and that's where the extension code runner we installed will help us. For that, we need to go to the settings from here. Another way is by clicking this icon here. In this settings window, search for Code Runner, and we should update a couple of settings. I like this feature of clearing the previous output when we run the code. Then this is the option we were looking for to run the code in terminal. I also like this option of saving the file before run so that we simply run the file and changes in the files are saved before it runs. And that's it. Now let's run the code again. The previous execution was not yet stopped, so let's stop that. Now you see that it is on the terminal and it is asking for the input. There is also this button from where you can run the code. Before I move to test a sample C++ code, I would like to indicate that at times, I have seen people messing up with different settings and the code does not run. In such case, we have another option to compile and run the code using command line statements, which we can execute on terminal. Let's delete this exe file of code too and see the alternate compile and run method. For that, go to terminal option from the menu bar and it opens the terminal which is same as the command prompt. Make sure we are in the same directory where we have the file we are trying to compile and run. To compile a program, execute the command gcc space the name of the file. There is no error. And see here an exe file, a.exe, has been created. We need to run this to see the output. But you see, the name a.exe is not a good name. Every time we will compile any file, it will have the name a.x, and previous version will get overwritten. There is a way to set the name of this exe file while compiling. So, let's delete this. And now, we will run the command as gcc space hyphen o, where this o mean the output file, and then, we need to specify the name we want to assign to the output file. Usually, we prefer to have the same name as of the source file. So I will write code 2. This will be the name of the exe file. Then we need to put a space followed by the name of the source file, which is code2.c. And see that now the name of the output exe file is code2.exe. To run the exe file, we will use the command dot slash, which means the current directory, and followed by the name of the exe file. And we have the output. The last thing we will see is running a C++ code. No setting or configuration is needed to be changed. Let's create a new file. Name it as code3, and this time for C++, the extension will be .cpp. Literally, this is the only thing you need to change to work with C++ program. That is having the correct file extension. Let's copy a sample C++ code. Let's run this. And we have the output. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for your time.